Hello everybody. Today we're going to talk about important factors when considering an energy upgrade to your historic or vintage home here in the Northwest. How does removing air movement affect the air quality in the house? I think that is really important for people to understand. Agreed. You know, I think there's a couple of misconceptions and, and, and important truths. One would be that a, a leaky house has good air quality. That's not always the case. I could be bringing air up from a, a basement or a place that's poor of radon or something else. Mm -hmm. I could be bringing air in from outside in a place that I don't feel great mm -hmm. about, maybe a, a backyard or a dog kennel. I could be bringing air in from a crawl space that's really unhealthy. So the, the way that we look at this is that, you know, your, our cars are very tight enclosures, right? You can turn on recirc or turn on air from outside. Mm -hmm. My car is a very tight place. So what I want to do is to try to build a building that's fairly tight so I can control the air inside. So air quality is really based on a couple things. One would be the building itself. What can contributions come from paint and the uh, materials itself, cabinets, mm -hmm. that's one pollutant. We call those those called building pollutants. The other pollutants, which are probably bigger, are ours, right? I'm a dispersed pollutant, right? I'm walking around, I'm giving off uh, odors, dogs are dispersed pollutants, kids are dispersed pollutants, they're just faster. And um, if you look at everything moving around, uh, that's a ventilation need that I have for dispersed pollutants. I also have things that I keep in the house. Have you ever looked underneath your kitchen sink? Right? Yeah. Under the kitchen sink, wow, that's a lot of stuff under there. If you ever pull the top off a paint can and seen it's all dry, where did the liquid go? So all of those things in our house is how we, as occupants, can positively or negatively affect or our even off gassing well. from new furniture or Correct. rugs or whatever, clothing, okay. dry cleaning, and so on. So the house has the potential for an air quality issue just because of normal lifestyle. So we know that what we need to do is supply a fresh, steady amount of fresh air, not too much because I have to pay for that to condition it, and not too little because then the pollutants build up. So there's a pretty optimum range for fresh air in houses. Um, we say about seven and a half or seven and a half to eight uh, CFM per bedroom is the number that we use as called ASHRAE standard 622. It's a baseline for fresh air Cubic for feet per minute. That's right, and so what I can do is say, if I could get uh, every room a steady supply of fresh air, that would be terrific, but how do I do that? Yeah, so there's systems out there. What are our options? I mean, you may, I'm sure there's a lot more than, than we have here yeah. to discuss today, but... It's actually pretty simple. There's basically three fundamental options. One is I could take a fan and turn it on and run it all the time. And if I said I want to take uh, 70 cubic feet of air per minute and move that out of the house 24-7, by the laws of physics, it means that no matter what, if I'm pulling that amount of stale air out, somehow, somewhere, that air's got to come back it's in. Gotta so that's come. A, a, a direct connection to outside. The other option is I could say, well, what if I blew fresh air into the house instead of sucking it out and la letting it find its way in? Maybe if I pushed air in, it's called supply ventilation. Could I take a fan and actually blow air into the house and would that end up having to push the air out of the building, right? So if I push the air out, would that be better than pulling it in from a place I didn't want? Certain climates, even like here, that can be an acceptable approach. Colder climates, it's a higher risk. If I push warm air out of the building, it could get into cavities that are cold and cause a problem. In climates like this, we can probably get by your moderate enough and sometimes moist to bring that air into the house. So that's another option. The final option that we like um, in colder climates and even climates like this is called balanced ventilation. Mm -hmm. I can have a fan that brings a certain amount of air out, maybe 100 or 80 cubic feet per minute, and another fan that brings the same amount in. So what if I put fresh air in each one of the bedrooms while I took stale air out of kitchens, you know, bathrooms and a laundry room, I would take them out of the pollutant locations and put them back to where people live. And that's the, the most um, mm. logical and, and straightforward approach to say, put fresh air where people live, take stale air out of sources that are a problem, and that really provides a good indoor air So quality. we're talking about fans, ducting, uh, different types of systems on the market for all of this. Is it pretty easy for a consumer to go online and and look some of this for some look up some of this stuff or is there a kind of a guide that I mean if you're doing if you don't have any of that you have a historic home you don't have a let's say you have a boiler system that doesn't right. have a exactly. you know a, a, like a furnace and HVA system right what are some of those options available to you yeah and I think most people have that challenge right I mean in in this marketplace there's a lot of boilers because air conditioning wasn't a big thing you know and so I would say that if you don't have any ducting in order to move air I've got to put in a fan and ductwork and so I think that people would say I'd like fresh filtered air in my house, then you have to invest in a fan and some ductwork. 
and a filter. And I think that as we're seeing people saying, what's well, a simple ventilation system? So I could actually go to, to a, a Dunlumber, buy a very quiet bathroom fan, and uh, put it inside the house, mm -hmm. turn it on, and for you know a few hundred dollars, probably give myself at least basic ventilation. So I at least had consistent ventilation. I could turn it on low speed. It maybe uses 15 watts of electricity. And at that point, your air is coming through where cracks in the walls or wherever. Yeah. But it's probably out from outside. Mm -hmm. We know that for a fact. Um, could be from a garage too or a basement. But at least it's coming in somewhere from outside, maybe bringing some pollutants with it, but at least it's exchanging the air in the house mm -hmm. instead of a house that has no intentional ventilation means some bedrooms would have poor air, some bedrooms would have uh, better air, but with an exhaust ventilation, you just don't know where it's coming. At least coming. you're getting the major toxins out. You, you would probably hopefully do that. Now remember, if you're bringing it in from a garage mm. or a crawl space, that might increase mm. my concerns that mm. I don't have before. So I, I think it's always important to realize that houses that have no way of getting fresh air to where people live probably needs that. So if, you're, if you have an intake fan, obviously it would be adv advantageous to to filter that and heat it. Correct. But are there systems that are units in and of themselves that, that accomplish that? Is, is it even worth it at that point if you're heating that? It's a good question. You know, I think either way we're heating it, right? So if I'm gonna bring it in and leak it in, I still have to put energy into it. So there are systems on the market that are fairly simple and straightforward that can bring the air in, add a little electric heat and warm it up. The good thing about where we live in the Pacific Northwest here that, um, it doesn't take a lot of energy and your cost of energy is fairly low. So I'm not bringing in zero degree air like you did in the Yukon mm -hmm. and try to bring it up to 70. I might bring it in at 50 and bring it up to 70. So that's a little bit easier to do. The cost to do that is less. Um, so there's simple ways of providing healthier, fresh air. We just have to commit to doing it. So if we're gonna do a remodel, let's agree that we're gonna be safe with combustion, provide an improved indoor air quality, and do that intentionally. Remember those started. windows that were made back in, I think it was the 70s, where they had the little the little vents on them that would, mm -hmm. if it was a negative air pressure, those vents would open up and bring in those fresher. Do they, those aren't made anymore, they are, are they? Do you, oh, they are? Yeah, there's other markets in the, in the country, actually, in the Pacific, in the Northeast, I would say, that still install those, like in, uh, in um, uh -huh. apartment buildings where you would go to bed at night uh -huh. and then open the, the gap. <laughs> in European communities, they still do that. So as I have a masonry building in Europe, there are central fans that depressurize the house. So when you put the children to bed, you would slide open the little diffuser in their room and leak a certain amount of fresh air in the bedroom. When they would wake up, you'd walk over and close the diffuser. If I had a, um, a clothes dryer, I would put the clothes in the dryer, which is an exhaust fan. I would pull a little vent. It would open the vent. There's Swedish fans that do this. And it would let, let a trickled amount of air come in. After the clothes were dry, I would pop the vent closed and I would pull the clothes up. Now that's absolutely doable. Just that they say in this country, nobody wants to it's turn It's a manual process. And just, and and you have to do it manual, do it. I need a switch or an iPhone to turn it on or close it. So I think uh, we expect things to be a bit more automatic. So the idea of adding fans that have controls. There are fans on the market and ventilation systems that you can actually control with an app. That's right. And say, I'm, I'm gonna be gone for two days, I'll turn it off. As you're coming back, you could say, I'd like to turn the ventilation on and kind of purge what's in the house. So I, I think it's almost, there's almost no excuse for doing existing buildings, retrofits, and even new construction that, that don't intentionally supply fresh air for people in the home. I don't, I don't, I, this is a great conversation because I don't think this is something that is normally said from contractor to client. And I think it's really important. So this is really an awesome conversation. Awesome. I know I'm learning a lot anyway. So thank pleasure. you so much. That nice was awesome. You. Thank you, sir.